Hey everyone, this is the Black Manga Critic, and I'm back with another weekly Shonen Jump Friday video. Now, basically, this is going to be a review, a review of The Promised Neverland, Chapter 61. Uh, again, weekly Shonen Jump, sometimes they'll have a week where they just put out straight fire. And this was a week where they put out straight fire. Uh, Boku no Hero was great, um, in terms of, like, the way it was selling its, uh, like, sort of narrative about Chisaki. Um, One Piece was great in terms of the comedy. Like, that was a classic One Piece comedy. It was good shit. Um, and this chapter was great because the Promised Neverland is always fucking great. So they always come, they always come ready. But this chapter was particularly great because I think a lot of people were sort of like, you know, um, maybe, maybe some people were like, oh, I don't know, you know, Promise Neverland, the Promised Neverland kind of slowed down a little bit. I don't think it slowed down. I think it's been phenomenal, um, since the fucking, um, beginning, really. Uh, and this chapter was, was great. It had, like, exactly what, um, we, um, you know, like, like what, um, us, like, Promised Neverland readers, uh, well, what we, Promised Neverland readers, want from this fucking manga. We want, like, action, we want suspense, we want mystery, we want the intellectual, like, battles and stuff like that. And this shit is great. Someone, I think some, um, some guy, I want to say it was the RPG manga or something like that, he's a, he's a YouTuber, um, that I follow. He makes videos sometimes, like a lot of fandom video, or like a lot of videos about fandoms and stuff like that, and sometimes videos about like the manga and anime that he um that he's reading and watching. But like, he said like it was like the new Death Note, right? And I, in some ways, I agree, right? Because I don't think it's like totally Death Note because it's a whole different, another fucking thing, right? Um, but it's similar in like in like there's constant there are constant intellectual battles going on in almost every fucking chapter. You know what I mean? Like, this manga brings it every fucking week, man. You know, it's like, God damn. <laughs> like, it brings it every week. And, and the thing that I love about this chapter was the way in which, you know, it started, right? Um, Shirai and Pusuka, right, um, sort of um, gave us Emma and Ray as the fucking savant um, kids that they are, right? Like, they introduced them, um, they introduced them as a um, savant kid children that they are because they're fucking ridiculous. I mean, like, they were like, they were on some Gon level shit, you know what I mean? Like Gon, like Kilo and Killua level shit, right? Where like Gon and Killua like learn things at a rapid fucking rate, because they're also like savant, like children, like they're like brilliant, right? Like they're just like in intuitively like incredible. And uh, Emma and Ray are very similar, right? Emma's very similar to like in, like Gon, um, um, in a very general sense, right? And like Ray is very similar to Killua in a in a general sense, right? So you know, um. There's like a way which right like right like Sir Shirai Pazuka introduced them as like fucking like brilliant children who are intently watching um teacup guy. I call him teacup guy. Some people don't know what to call him. I call him teacup guy because that was like, you know, um the biggest thing that that, that I noticed about him. He was always sipping like air tea or or whatever and like, you know, um you know stuff like that, right? Like so I call him teacup guy. But um they were like studying the shit out of him. Like, you know what I mean? And like there, like, can you do that? Can you study someone and like pick up some things at times? Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Um, you know, like, uh, you, call, you know, call it like, um, like some people like are, are audio visual learners, right? Like, we see that all the time. People learn through seeing, through hearing, through, um, um, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and certain things like that, right? Through that kind of that kind of observation. Um, but like, these got these these um kids are at a fucking whole nother fucking level. And I love the fact that Shirai Pusuka just like continue to like push that. These we have we always have to remember these children are not fucking normal. That that leads me to believe that like um you know maybe maybe they were born maybe like they were born right like clearly like they were born but like they like um the um like right like Isabella had to have eaten some sort of like crazy like pills or something like that while um she was carrying Ray and um uh, Emma also like had to have like had like a mother that was carrying her that like you know, um, had some sort of, like, crazy, not growth hormones or anything like that, but just, like, certain types of, like, um, uh, um, medicines or, um, drugs or whatever that were fed to their mothers that in turn affected, um, their growth, right? Like, um, while they were, while they were, um, you know, being fostered, um, in the womb by their mothers, right? Like, that, like, that's, like, I, I'm pretty sure because, like, they're, like, like, even this guy was, like, yo, this kid's too fucking smart. <laughs> and this guy's fucking brilliant, right? Like, he's gotta be brilliant, right? Because he survived this whole time. He's one of the kids from the farm. All these kids are fucking brilliant at some level, right? And the, and Emma and Ray are like, whoa. Like, he's like stunned. He's like, yo, this fucking kids, man. I'm really trying out here. I'm really trying to like, you know, take these fucking kids out. And these kids just keep fucking surviving. You know what I mean? Like, it's really, really funny. So, um, again, like, 
Sharad Pursuka introduced these kids as um, Emma and Ray as kids who are not um, people to be fucked with, right? Because like if you underestimate them for a fucking second, you're done, right? So what I also loved was that just as quickly as they are introduced as like these brilliant fucking children who can you know um, who are just gonna keep keep come keep coming at it and keep thinking about brilliant things and brilliant ideas and doing brilliant things um, and resourceful things. Just as quickly as we um, are introduced um, to the kids as that, we see that like they are kids and they um, haven't had as much, nearly as much experience as Tika guy has, period, right? They have, they just do not have nearly as much um, experience traversing these um, demon um, uh, sort of um, environments as Tika guy. So they fucked up, right? And there was that point, and the one, the one point that I really, really loved uh, was the way in which like, um, Emma and Ray reacted in a way that like kids who don't have a lot of experience, right? Like experience with this type of shit would react. Doesn't like, doesn't necessarily matter how like brilliant you are, or how smart you are in certain ways. Like, um, even someone like Emma, who is like, I think a savant at like compartmentalizing her emotions. Right. And, and Ray to a lesser, to a lesser extent, but like, these kids are really good about being like, yo, we gotta, we gotta be on the level. We gotta chill. We gotta, you know, we gotta be on the level. And they just, they were just fucking shook. I mean, like, one of these man eater like demons came out from the from the skies. I and that was a great panel. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the art a little bit later, but like, basically, like, they this fucking man eater came out of the sky, just like came down on them. Um, you know, and Emma was the most shook that I've ever seen. Her. The, the only time I've ever seen her more shook, maybe is the first chapter, I want to say, right? Like, when we um, when we had that reveal that, like, uh, shit ain't what it seems, right? And um, Emma sees Connie's body, and she's just like, oh, my fucking gosh. She's just horrified, right? That that That's what I love, right? It's like that um, Shirai and Pasuka save Emma's reaction, and um, that, re that aesthetic, right? The way that she looks, right? That visage, right? They save those visages um, and those reactions, for opportune, like for those opportune moments, for those opportune narrative moments, right, where they will have the most impact. And this is an instance where, like, Emma just like it's not even so much as he drops the ball because, like, you can't blame her for freaking the fuck out, right? But there is a way in which, like, um, Tika guy was like, "Yo, like, if you fuck up, you dead," right? And that's basically what happened, right? There was like an almost like um, observation hot key kind of moment where Emma saw her own death and her head was like fucking bit off. You know what I mean, like. It, it um bitten off like it was really 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 good shit that and then so I'm gonna move into like um the art in that sense because Masuka wonderful job with the art yet again um Pasuka always does like always comes to fucking um you know play she always comes um not she right um I, I think it's I think it's a guy um but uh Pasuka always comes um to, to to win like always comes to um bring that greatness. And that was one of the panels that I love. Like, well, two of those panels, right? The panel where Emma just had, like, freaked out, um, right, when she saw the man eater coming from, um, from, from, from the skies. And the panel where um, she saw, basically saw, like, her own death, where she was like, can I just, like, die right now? That was really great art. Because it was so intense. Especially with, like, that, that panel where it looked like her head had been, like, um, you know, ripped clean off. I was like, oh, my goodness. I was like, oh, like even if just like for a split second, right? Because you know, Emma's not dead, but, um, the best thing that an artist can do, uh, or a writer can do, but, but here we're talking about art, right? So the best thing that an artist can do in these situations is convince you, even if it's for a split second, that something has happened, some event has happened, right? Um, within the nap, within, um, the, uh, uh, the story that, um, no, within, the, uh, within a particular narrative, right? that um really hits you even if it's for a split second right and um, because like you like because some you know people react differently i may react and say like oh it was for a split second i was like yo like i was dead and other people might be like you know for like a minute they might be like yo like what the fuck happened to emma so i really appreciate when an artist um is able to do that when an artist is able to sort of like you know um have that much impact um just in those little moments you know what i mean like because um Shirai is um, clearly the writer, right, of the series, right? And Pasuka is clearly um, the artist that, uh, you know, conveys um, the aesthetic of um, Shirai's narratives and, and plot points and general story. So I always appreciate that. I'm always going to shout out Pasuka whenever I do a review of The Promised Neverland because, 
you know Pasuko's putting in that work. So basically, um, I guess like the ending was like, you know, the ending was interesting, right? Because like Tika guy like clearly like um, you know, play them, right? Like he clearly put and 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 he and he's gonna continue to play Emma and Ray. This is like some, this is not gonna be like the last time, right? Clearly, that um Tika guy tries to pull some shit. So you know that Emma and Ray are gonna get out of it. We understand that. We understand that they're gonna figure something out. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is. It's gonna be something that has to do with some sort of like, you know, some some really brilliant plan that um utilizes the weaknesses of these man eaters, right? And their sort of pack mentality. I, I'm pretty sure that's that's what's gonna happen. But even if it doesn't, I'm just looking forward to seeing what the fuck Shirai and Pasuka give me next. Because I'm always looking forward to seeing what Shirai and Pasuka give me next. So this is basically my review of the Promise Neverland chapter 61. Again, great, great, great stuff. I always look forward to on the Promise Neverland. I'm the black manga critic and I'm out. <laughs>